But just to kick things off, um, let me ask the question I always ask at the start of these conversations. What is your current assessment of the global economy and financial markets? Uh, it's bad on at least two levels. Uh, the, the first level is, um, you know, the year ahead. Are we going to have a recession or not? And it looks like we definitely are for, for a few reasons. Here, here's some of the major high points that lead to a, um, a, a slowing economy in the next year. Um, consumers are totally tapped out. Um, credit card debt um, is at a record level and the savings rate has gone down to about zero right now, which means uh, people just aren't going to be able to spend in the year ahead the way they spent in 2022 because they used up all their borrowing power then. You know, So that, that inevitably leads to a slowing economy. Uh, meanwhile, M the M2 money supply is shrinking, which it hardly ever does. You know, the, uh, the stock market and the economy usually track M2 pretty closely. Um, and if that continues, that means shrinking economy in the year ahead and probably falling stock prices. Um, housing is rolling over and stocks and bonds lost um, about $16 trillion between them globally in, in the past year, which means we've got a, a wealth effect in reverse coming where, um, you know, when, when your stocks are up or your bonds are up, you feel smart, uh, you feel rich, you want to go out and buy things. The reverse is true when those things go down. And that's what happened in the last year. A lot of people feel dumber and poorer than they did at the beginning of 2022. So um, that's liable to lead to, uh, again, lower consumer spending and a slowing economy. So we almost certainly have a recession in the coming year. Um, but that's not really the big story at all. The big story is that the underlying problems have not been fixed in any way, shape or form. You know, we're still running um, a structural deficit in the US of a trillion dollars a year. In other words, we're taking on huge amounts of new debt continuously. Um, and that's not going to go away because baby boomers are retiring. You know, we, we want our Medicare and our Social Security now. And you're not going to be able to take it away from us, which means the government is going to have to spend more and more year after year, and they're just going to borrow the money. So deficit, deficit is going to grow. At the same time, interest rates are higher, which means all of our government debt has to be rolled over at higher and higher rates, which means higher and higher interest expense. So you put those two things together and, you know, we're going to be adding a couple of trillion dollars a year to the debt. And it's going to be kind of a death spiral where we pay more and more interest on the debt that we're taking on, which leads us to take on even more debt. Uh, and it's not clear how we get out of that. You know, that is something that uh, could basically end the financial system as we know it and in the not too distant future. So, so yeah, um, in general, I'm not optimistic about uh, the near ter term or the, um, the intermediate term for the U.S. and the rest of the world. Okay. Um, it's amazing how many of my charts you just uh, tied into <laughs> with your answer there. So um, let's dive in here. Um, how to tackle this. Why don't, why don't we start with money supply? So um, as measured by M2 here in the US, um, I'll put up a chart here that's showing what we're talking about here. Um, but the money supply after skyrocketing, you know, in, in the wake of the pandemic um, is now actually shrinking for the first time in this data set, which goes back uh, to the late 50s, right? So really, it's something that we have not seen before. Uh, as Americans, um, at least adult Americans, um, where we're seeing the actual pool of money start to, to shrink and who knows how long live that'll be. Um, but you wrote a book, John, you know, called The Money Bubble. Um, how material is this shifting into reverse right now in terms of the growth of, of, of M2? Well, it's, it's potentially huge because so much leverage has been built up in so many different sectors of the global economy because money was so easy for such a long time. In other words, we, we were flooding the system with new cash and new credit year after year after year. And that made a lot of things possible that uh, probably shouldn't have been possible. You know, you look at SPACs and NFTs and most of the rest of the crypto space and big tech and, you know, government bonds. How did Italy take on the amount of debt that it took on only because there was so much money sloshing around in the, the global financial system? So all those guys and many, many other over leveraged financial entities out there uh, can only survive if um, new money 
is handed to them year after year after year. And that's changed now. All of a sudden, the amount of money in the system is shrinking, which means, um, at, you know, as Warren Buffett says, it's only when the tide goes out that you find out who's been swimming naked. Well, the everything bubble um, or the money bubble, as, as James Turk and I titled our book, um, that that's a place where thousands and thousands, if not millions of, of financial entities have been swimming naked. In other words, they, they can't function without tons of new money coming in and they're gonna be exposed as bad business models, as frauds, as all kinds of things that uh, lead to bankruptcy in the next few years. So we're gonna see all kinds of um, um, banks, hedge funds and potentially governments um, implode because there isn't enough money to keep them going. And, uh, you know, I would start with maybe Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank um, and go from there because they're the uh, the kind of the poster children for this over leveraged financial entity that needs new money to survive and is not going to get it in the year ahead and what's going to happen. Uh, but uh, there, there's so many more like that. And um, that's what I think will be one of the big stories going forward is, oh, who went bankrupt today? <laughs> you know, And who's next? And uh, that's a terrible environment for risk assets. In other words, if you're buying something like Amazon stock, which kind of depends on the world improving or at least being stable going forward, um, then it's not that kind of world anymore. So that, that asset is going to be repriced at a much lower level and you're gonna lose a lot of money. So if you made your bets on margin, then you're one of the guys who uh, who was swimming naked. And uh, you know, as I keep repeating, there's a lot of people like that out there in this world. Okay, so um, liquidity was plentiful and cheap. Um, that allowed for a lot of um, asset bubbles to, to get created for malinvestment to, to happen. Now that you're saying that it's becoming less available and more expensive, um, you run the risk of sending the weaker players, at least initially first, you know, into some sort of cardiac arrest, and then that could maybe, you know, cascade further in, um, maybe in sort of some some way like we saw back in the 2008 global financial crisis here. Um, Adam, so, except, except much bigger. The numbers have doubled since then. So the crises will be commensurately scarier. Yeah, it, well, well, the numbers have doubled or in the case of... Um, uh, debt, uh, the debt pile actually, I think, is more like uh, tripled. Um, I, I'm doing this from memory now, but I think in the U.S. at least, federal debt was like around nine trillion in 2008. It's now 31 trillion. All right, so that, yeah. that's, that's more than a tripling, actually. Yeah, well, total debt in the U.S. Um, didn't triple because consumers um, they, they're taking on a lot of money lately, but they they retrenched for a while, and the housing market. Um, lost a lot of debt and has been rebuilding it, but hasn't, uh, you know, hasn't really doubled. So, so when you balance it all out, uh, you probably get some kind of a global doubling of debt, which okay. which is terrible. You which know, that's, is still, that's I mean, we're talking about what, yeah, thing. fourteen yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, terrible. yeah, yeah. You know, so so such a big piece of the debt that's been created in all of human history happened in the last twenty years, uh, and there's you know there's no way to fix that and maintain stable prices out there you know keep from keep the currencies of the world from collapsing uh so we're, we're in a box right now where whatever we do whatever the central banks and the governments of the world do they risk a gigantic crisis of one kind or another and so it's just a question of choosing now they got to you know make their choices decide which one of which crisis they're going to risk and then go for it and so far they're uh, they're tightening so they're they're risking the deflationary depression risk um and you know uh, another year like last year in terms of monetary tightening we could be there you know that it could happen <laughs>